Now we're ready to send our file to the publisher. And there's a couple steps we need to follow to get it ready so that they will be able to use this file without any problems. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of any erone erroneous objects that are outside of our document. So in this case, some of the branding colors we've brought in. So anything, uh, let's go ahead and zoom out, see if there's any items that are left over. We don't really want to include that in the document. It only makes the file size larger. So now I'm going to get rid of this little border that was only there for me to be able to see how it would be cropped or what the final cropping would be or the final trim size would be. So I'm just going to delete that. That was just for me. We removed the bleed so that it wouldn't be a distraction a few lessons ago. So I'm just going to go to File and add that bleed back in. I'm going to go to Document Setup and I'm just going to add my quarter of an inch bleed. So the top and bottom put together is a half an inch and the left and right is a half an inch. So that will be what that final bleed size is on the add specs we looked at. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. It's going to add the bleed. So now I need to extend all of my objects past the bleed that need to. So in this case, the background. So I have this background here that just needs to be extended all the way out to the bleed. And this is the case for anything that requires bleed, no matter where it's going to be. So I'm just going to select the next object below and expand that out all the way to the edge. So the hub, you won't be able to see that, but it's good for the printer to have that. Uh, this white little area, our object, diagonal object, also needs to be extended out. And just like that, everything is extended to the bleed, and we're ready to go. And so another thing we need to think about is our safety. So this was our safety line. This is about where it was. Pretty, pretty darn close. We went ahead and set that up when we set up the document. We need to make sure there's no text in this little area all the way around. In this case, I'm seeing the elemental background text there, so they may come back and tell me to adjust that. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure there's no text between the bleed, the trim size, the trim size, and the um, safety area. That's great. And so there's one more thing. Let's go ahead and delete that because we don't want that to be printed. I've done that before. That was an accident. I want to make sure that there's plenty of margin around the document. So when you have a magazine, you don't know how thick it is and you don't know where you're going to be placed in the magazine. And sometimes I've done ads and I placed them in there and I went to look at the magazine to see how they looked. And because the spine was so thick, it was a very thick magazine, the way the spine kind of curves the page, it kind of hid some things on this left side, or it could be on the other side and hide a few things on the right side. So that's why when you do magazine publications, you need to make sure you have super wide margins on the left and right side, because you don't know how thick that spine is going to be or how many pages are going to be bundled up and curve your design so it's not perfectly flat. There's a little bit that's curved down into the spine and it can kind of distort it a little bit. So what I need to do is move my logo over so I have an even wider margin. And same goes for the website, so that just in case that happens, I have lots of space here for that to happen. Okay, so another step, I need to make sure it's in CMYK mode. Uh, everything that's printed needs to be CMYK. And I originally did this in RGB because I wanted to be able to take this and make some digital graphics out of it. So let's make sure it's in CYMK mode since this is going to be printed. So I'm just going to go to File. I'm going to go to color our document color setup and make sure that is switched to CMYK. So it's going to go ahead and convert everything for you and there has been no big shifts in color, no big changes so we don't have to adjust anything. So I didn't see any big shifts in color. So another thing we need to do is speaking of color is we can go up to view and go down to proof colors. And so this is a really handy tool. So you could go ahead and click on proof colors. And it's going to show kind of a more realistic idea of what your inks are going to look like when it's printed. So it's going to change the way your blacks look. So you kind of see how it looks with it on. And I'm going to go ahead and take proof colors off. And you can't really see a huge difference, but when I try to proof my blacks, I try to do this because sometimes blacks can print more gray than you expect because on a digital screen, blacks can be more dark. And when printed, they can come out a little bit lighter. So I just like to do that just to make sure I check my colors. Um, I usually have proof colors checked all the time when I'm doing a print project so I can kind of see realistically kind of what the final print color may look like. So I'm not surprised because there can be some very small variations of what it looks on the screen and how it prints. 
great. So there's one more thing I need to do. I need to make sure I create outlines on all of my text. And this is true for anything you send off to the printer, even if it's not a magazine ad. Anything you're getting printed, you have to create outlines. So right now I have a, a live editable text. We need to create outlines because if we don't create outlines and the person doesn't have that type or font installed on their computer, it's going to look a little different. So we always need to outline type. So we can select all, go ahead and select everything in the document, go up to type and create outlines. So I'm just going to go into type and create outlines and notice that it outlined that type and we're ready to go. So we went ahead and uh, got our bleed black on, back on the document. We made sure everything bleeds out, made sure our safety, there's nothing in the safety area that could be important. We made sure we have extra wide margins on our left and right side since it's going to be a magazine ad. We proofed our colors to make sure our colors would print well. We made sure this document was in RG, our CMYK mode and not RGB mode, and we created outlines. So it's a lot of steps, but once you kind of go through this a few times, it all becomes natural. And before you export, just make sure you went through and checked each one of those items off. And because if you don't, the printer will notice, the, or the publisher or the printer will send the file back and say, I need you to add bleed, I need you to create outlines. And this prevents you having to go back and forth sending files. You can have everything perfect, so when they get it, they're like, great, good job. Okay, so last thing to do is export our file. So we're going to export it as a PDF. So we're going to go to File, Save As, and do a PDF. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this to my desktop. And so there's a preset that's automatically in Illustrator that I like to start with. And you can save your own preset. So if you have a certain preset you like, you save it and you never have to do all the details again. So this one is going to be called Press Quality. So we're sending it to the press. We're sending it to the printer. So Press Quality. And one of the only, the few things I do modify is I check off Preserve Illustrator Editing Capabilities. And what that does is Preserving Illustrator Editing Capabilities gives this file a chance to be work just like an Illustrator file where you can live edit everything. We don't need that. And what that does is that drives up the file size and makes the file size mega big. So I like to uncheck it because publishers appreciate your file size not being 50 megabytes, you know, even a gigabyte sometimes. So all, I always uncheck that. That is not a problem if it's a final PDF ready to be printed. So uncheck preserve editing capabilities. Everything else is fine. If we go down to compression, everything's going to be great because the preset has already kind of set it for us for press quality. 300 PPI or DPI is really what we want for printing. So we always want to make sure that as 300 or higher when we're printing. Marks and bleed, we want to make sure we click on use document bleed settings. So now it's going to adapt our bleed to the document. And a lot of times when I do print projects like business cards and letterheads, I make sure I click on trim marks so that they can see where to trim uh, the bleed off. Uh, I like to do that, but for magazine ads and publications, I like to click it off because I've done, I've put together magazines before and I've worked with other people's ads. And anytime they have crop marks and they send it over, I have to remove those crop marks to put it in the magazine. So just to be friendly, as someone who's put together magazines before, I like to have it clicked off. And that's just really for magazines and books. Um, for everything else, print, where they're putting it on big sheets and printing mini on a big sheet like a business card, I do like to have trim marks. Everything else is going to be okay. So we're going to click on save. And we're going to have our document pop up for us. Here it is. And we're going to go ahead and zoom out and make sure everything looks great. Just need to send it off to my editor to make sure there's no spelling errors, which happens quite often with me. Personally, you probably see that. I'm not the best speller in the world, so that's why I have someone who always looks over stuff. And so we would just do that final step. And you'll notice with PDFs that have text outlined. So we outline the type. I'm going to zoom in. There's something that clients complain about a lot, and they don't need to worry about it. But this is an issue that I've had. So you notice the elemental. You notice how the L's are a little bit thicker? They kind of mess up a little. Maybe if I zoom in, you could see it a little better. But they kind of look chunky, these L's. You can't really see it when you zoom in, but when you zoom out, you really see it. Uh, just to assure the client that that's just because of the PDF and how it renders, it's not going to print that way. It's just how what happens when you outline type and you zoom out on a PDF. So there you have it, my entire process of how to export for a magazine ad. And hopefully this process is good and you can 
redo this process for each print item you have uh, and it'll be great.